I was let's get to the pick. So it's UFC 230 this weekend. Heavyweights in the main event, but largely this is a middleweight pay-per-view main card. The other four fights you will see all to be contested at 185 pounds. First fight you will see on the main card. I was surprised it wasn't the featured bout third from the bottom. First fight on pay-per-view. Israel Adesanya, minus 320. The favorite against Derek Brunson. He comes back at plus 240 for what will be Brunson's 14th UFC appearance. Ryan, what do you think about the pay-per-view opener? Are you going Israel Adesanya or Derek Brunson? I'm favoring Adesanya here. Um, I think Brunson tends to fight a little too aggressive, too emotional. I think he's been taking some of the trash talk that Adesanya has been taking or saying a little too personal. I think he's going to come out fast and try to hurt him early, and I think he's going to pay for it. I got Adesanya probably getting the knockout. And you know that's Derek Brunson's style, Ken Flo. Adesanya 3-0 yeah. and in the UFC, all of those here in 2018, probably on the short list for fighter of the year with respect to Daniel Cormier and the other guys. Last win for Adesanya, Kenny, five-rounder against Brad Tavares. He's obviously getting the respect from Las Vegas here against Derek Brunson. How do you see this one playing out? And I also, I also think that five-rounder was huge for his experience and for his confidence moving forward against other potential uh, guys who might want to try to take him down like a Derek Brunson. Now, Derek Brunson certainly has better takedowns um, than his last opponent. Uh, however, uh, I agree with Ryan. I think that Derek does fight a little bit too emotional, especially at this point in his career. I, I think that should not have a place uh, in, in how he approaches a fight, yet he continues to do that. And against someone like Adesanya, uh, that is absolutely death. Uh, this is a guy who can counter you uh, going forward, going backwards. Um, he has a lot of different weapons that he can hurt you with. Um, and I think he's that much more effective against aggressive guys. Guys that are coming forward, um, I think, are going to get hurt way more often against a high-level uh, counter striker like Adesanya. Um, I think Adesanya takes this as well. And we'll see if Brunson tries to wrestle, but don't sleep on that takedown defense for Adesanya. Certainly he knows what a lot of fighters are going to try to do to him stylistically to try to put him on his back, and we'll see if Brunson goes that path this weekend in what is the biggest fight of the young career for Israel Adesanya. All right, Carl Robertson, minus 290, the favorite against the Welshman, Jack Marshman. He is at plus 225. So Robertson coming off his first pro loss. That was by submission to Cesar Mutanchi Fajeda, UFC 224, back in May. Marshman up and down in the UFC, two up, two down. Ryan, who do you like in this one, the favorite, Robertson, or the underdog, Jack Marshman? So to be honest, I don't know a ton about these guys. I've been doing a little research. Um, Marshman's got a lot more experience. Robertson, obviously a kickboxer in glory, good striker, but I'm going to go with Marshman here as the underdog. I, I'm hoping his experience will be able to just let him be the more savvy fighter, maybe get some takedowns and work the grappling. I like Marshman with the uh, plus 225 and uh, the number there. See, we like this guest picker, Ken Flo, Ryan Martinson, right? He's got a dulcet tone to his voice, but he's not out here faking it, right? Like he's seen <laughs> every Jack Marshman yes. fight that ever exists. I haven't called a Jack Marshman fight, so I'm trying to close the gap when it comes to my knowledge of that fighter for this weekend. Uh, your thoughts on Marshman against the upstart Carl Robertson, Flo? Yeah, this is an interesting fight. Listen, I think the Robertson uh, has a huge advantage uh, on the feet. Uh, Marshman, I think, can make things interesting if he's able to take him down. Um, I think Robertson would be in trouble here. Uh, I I'm going to go the other way, though. I, I think Robertson uh, is able to get it done on the feet. And I will take the under two and a half rounds. Am I allowed to do that? I think you're getting a finish on one side or the other. <laughs> All right, next up, David Branch, as many of you know, was to face Jacare Souza. Instead, he will be the prohibitive favorite against Jared Cannoneer, Branch minus 425, Cannoneer plus 315. He was going to fight later in November in Argentina. Instead, gets pulled from a much lower profile spot, and now he gets thrust onto a big pay-per-view for what will be his UFC middleweight debut. Ryan, what do you think, Branch or the killer gorilla Jared Cannoneer? I got Branch here, although I am surprised the odds were as long as they were. I thought they'd be a little closer. But I think Branch being the better wrestler, far better jiu-jitsu guy, I think he's going to take the fight down, control him, beat him up, maybe even get a submission. I don't think Branch will be able to knock him out on the feet. Kenny is such a tough dude, but I just see Branch really working the grappling and dominating this fight, so it's probably a decision one. It'll be interesting to talk to Jared Cannonier later in the week as to what challenges he had in moving up that weight cut a couple weeks 
given the fact that he hasn't had to weigh 186 in the UFC thus far. Ken Flo, David Branch coming off a knockout of Tiago Santos April 21st in Atlantic City. He's won two of three now in what is this second UFC stint for him. Only lost in that time to Luke Rockhold. So largely he's looked pretty good. The striking is starting to come around for David Branch. Your expectations for Branch in this spot this weekend? Yeah, he has looked good, and he actually hurt Luke Rockhold in, in that fight. I thought he was going to pull off an upset win. He's one of my former uh, training partners uh, in New York when I was over at Henzo Gracie's. And uh, David Branch, is, he's a hard worker, and I think he really is fighting with a lot of motivation right now. He sees himself as kind of getting into the upper echelon of middleweights, and he really needs this win. Cannoneer is very dangerous, uh, obviously heavy-handed fighter, um, tough uh, knows how to deal with adversity, uh, dangerous in the clinch as well. But I think David Branch takes this one, and I agree with Ryan. I, I think he should largely come behind that that ground attack. All right, co-main event, Chris Weidman goes from slight underdog against Luke Rockhold to now the mon- minus 175 favorite against Jacare Souza. Souza plus 145. Huge fight here, big stakes at 185 pounds. First fight for Weidman, as we mentioned, since that big submission win over Kelvin Gastelum. That was last July. Jacare's 2018, the knockout of Derek Brunson in a main event in January. Then he was beaten by Kelvin Gastelum. Split decision, UFC 224 in May. Ryan, Weidman, Jacare, and the co-main, who will it be for you? I got Weidman. Um, as far as the striking goes, I think these guys are fairly even. Both have power. Both prefer to throw the hands on the Jacare's obviously got the head kick knockout. I think this fight's going to come down to who can control the clinch and who can get it on top when they do hit the mat, and I think that's going to be Weidman with the better wrestling. I, I really hope they do grapple because I'm, I'm fascinated by these two matching up as a grappler uh, aspect of it. So, yeah, I got Weidman probably by decision. Very close fight, though. Ken Flo, I'm excited to watch this one. Jacare Souza, Chris Weidman, which way do you think it goes? Yeah, listen, I, I think that uh, Kelvin Gastelum laid down the blueprint of how to defeat Jacare Souza. You're going to have to uh, use counter wrestling. You have to stop those takedowns. You have to watch out for that overhand, um, you know, maybe a, a few high kicks. But um, Jacare tends to telegraph a little bit. Uh, Jacare is getting a little bit older. I think he's always going to be a threat with his power and, of course, with his ground game. But he's most effective when he gets on top of you. Um, his arm triangle is amazing. His arm lock is great. His Kimura uh, has always been a threat since he was competing in, as a jiu-jitsu practitioner. So um, I, I think Chris Weidman has a game uh, that can kind of neuter uh, Jacare, uh, and I think Chris gets it done by decision here. So is neuter for a boy and spay for a girl? Is that <laughs> is that right? Sure. Do you know? Sure. Well, why not? Well, no, I mean, with, in regards to dog, better. in regards to dogs, yes, because <clears throat> yes. neuter sounds better. I, I just didn't, I didn't know which was which. Taking um, away his game, yes. <laughs> all right, finally, fellas, the main event, UFC 230, the two division champ Daniel Cormier favored at a minus 800 clip against Derek Lewis, the Black Beast, plus 525. So, what does it mean for our scoring system? A successful pick on the Black Beast should he win is six points. As many as eight if you get the method of victory and the round correct. Mm. That being said, Ryan, many believe he will be up against it in what is a short notice championship opportunity against D.C. Who do you have in the main event? Yeah, I agree. He is up against it. I got D.C. Um, Even if both guys are healthy, I think this fight is pretty one-sided. D.C. having a compromised hand, he's really going to rely on that wrestling even more. I think he takes this fight down. Where's out Derek Lewis? It's going to look a lot like probably the uh, the Anthony Johnson fight. The Vulcan the Demir fight is going to dominate on the ground. Probably get a late submission. I got second round submission for DC. All right, DC by second round sub. So Ken Flo, Derek Lewis fought 23 days ago. Tough fight against Alexander Volkov. Rallied for the win late mm-hmm. that night. DC's last fight, of course, July 7th at UFC 226. I'm interested to see. How much DC prepared for the possibility of a short notice fight before he ultimately got the call? Because right. you know he's wise enough to know that there was not a headliner at Madison Square Garden. I wonder what kind of shape Cormier really was in before the three week crunch. Uh, how do you see it playing out between Cormier and Lewis on Saturday? Uh, about a month ago, maybe a little bit longer, uh, 
DC okay. what DC was at Fox and he ordered his lunch and he uh -oh. ordered he ordered a chicken breast and I was like what the heck is he getting a chicken breast for uh -oh. DC just he fought he never gets a chicken breast unless right. he's fighting so um, I think he had something in the back of his head maybe that he was getting ready for so I don't know if it's as short notice as everyone thinks um however uh you know for for Derek lewis um it's not like he's kind of the guy that really pushes the pace on you and gets you exhausted uh but i, I think for dc he needs to get get in and get out De uh, Derek lewis is just way too dangerous um the, the guy it, it really is a monster I, I shook his hand last last wednesday uh it, it's scary just shaking that dude's hand if, if dc gets hit with one shot that's all it takes, and it doesn't have to be a perfect shot with, with Derek Lewis. He hits that hard. So, Daniel, yeah, absolutely needs to go in there and take him down right off the bat. Um, uh, you know, I, I will, if, if Daniel Cormier was taking on Godzilla, I would pick DC, of, cor of course. That. So, uh, I'm going with Cormier. Uh, let's go with first round submission. How's that? Round I was going to say second round, but Ryan took it, man. Right. And you have, right. He brought I mean, it today, hey. dude. Yeah, Ryan Martinson bringing it from the 209, man. Appreciate you coming on and listening to the show for course, and, and we will certainly have you back if you get the better of the flow this weekend, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Ryan. Of course. Thanks for having me. I just want to give a quick shout-out and a thank you to the Boston Red Sox because the only thing better than watching the Giants win the World Series, my San Francisco Giants, is watching the Dodgers lose <laughs> back. back. Uh, yes. Congratulations to the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> That's amazing. Love it. Thanks, Ryan. That's Thanks good stuff. Me, yeah, those San Francisco Giants fans are celebrating today for That's sure. That's true. And what I, I think like most about the Red Sox win is that they got it out of the way so they gave us a chance to celebrate here on the mm. Anakin Florian podcast because had they wrapped this thing up Tuesday or Wednesday night at Fenway Park, you know, next week we're recapping UFC 230. I'm not sure how much we're talking about the World Series. This and is true. Of course, Dodgers could have come back, but the Red Sox closing the show and it was absolutely amazing to see that series play out. All right, thank you all for listening. Big week, of course, coming up, UFC 230. And then we are back in about six and a half days to recap it all with you. Until then, for Ken Flo, I'm John Anik. Have a hell of a week, everybody. And if you are in Boston, enjoy the parade. Yo fucking later. The John Anik and Kenny Florian Podcast.